Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, before I go into the word, I know it's short, and I will do our best to keep within the time. I like to say I am highly impressed by Koga. I'm impressed with your discipline. I'm impressed with your organization. I'm impressed with your sense of commitment. I thank God for our leader, pastor, and evangelist, family leader. Thank you so very much. I want to thank everyone who has been involved in making us comfortable since we came, and I'm speaking on behalf of myself and all the guests that you have brought together, the team you have brought together this year. We deeply, deeply appreciate you. God bless you so much. But I must say something. Um, Pastor Famide, I hope this will be between you and me. I am a missionary, and a missionary is always ready to suffer for Jesus. But your people do not allow me to suffer for Jesus. <laughs> As a matter of fact, especially the people who are bringing food, the food. I mean, in five days, I added two inches to my waistline. <laughs> Now I have to go back to the gym for extra gymnastics. So I began to wonder, could this be a temptation? So I said, Lord, lead me not to temptation. Because it looks like, are these people trying to keep me here? So I said, no, Elijah, go back to Michel Field. <laughs> Thank you so very much. I appreciate you. The Lord bless you. It's a great thing to be encouraging to others. You are encouraging your people. And I believe they will reciprocate with greater commitment. God bless you. Precious Father, we thank you. We worship and adore you. Daddy, we say that you will help us, that that which you want to give us as our weapon, we shall use very well Amen. to the glory of your holy name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. We must read psalm 149 we must read it however short the time is praise the lord sing to the lord a new song and his praise in the assembly of saints let israel rejoice in their maker let the children of zion be joyful in their king. Let them praise his name with the dance. Let them sing praises to him with the timbre and harp. For the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He will beautify the humble with salvation. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing aloud on their beds. Let the high praise of God be in their mouth and a two-edged sword in their hands to exercise vengeance on the nations and punishments on the people, to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron, to execute on them the written judgment. This honor have all his saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to talk to you on the power of vengeance in praise. 
the power of vengeance in praise. Children of God, God has done great things for us in this year's Rehoboth. He has let us go. We are free. Is anybody in doubt? No. Okay. I, don't let me generalize it. I am free. I am free. I just want to warn you. The devil doesn't let people go just like that. Too. Who will rescue the captive from the mighty? God does. He has done it. But this victory must be perpetual. Amen. It must be maintained. Amen. And the secret of that maintenance is praise. Is praise. No more battle. Your battle is now going to be fought with praise. Amen. Because what you want to do now is to take vengeance on the enemy. And that vengeance comes as you praise the Lord. Let the saints be joyful in glory. Let them sing and sing aloud on their beds. Which means day and night keep praising God from now on. Keep praising God. And while you are doing that, what will happen is the Bible says the praises of God in your mouth we put a two-edged sword in your hand. That is talking of the word of God. You claim it. You repeat it. You tell the devil. It doesn't matter what you do. I am victorious. I have overcome you. I have been saved. I am free. And for that, you begin to praise God. You begin to worship God. You let him know you know exactly what you are doing. You see, how do you know that you have overcome? It's your attitude after the victory. You remember Anna? When she went to Shiloh, the Bible said, after the man of God, Eli said, may the Lord answer your petition. The Bible says she was no more sad. She went home happy like she already had the children. She went home happy. And the result is that after she had the one child that she had a covenant with God with, God gave her many more children. That's a secret you must know from today. Don't let the enemy entice you into slavery again by making you to doubt your victory. Don't doubt your victory. You've gotten it. Don't forget one of the things God said, I believe yesterday is, God has uprooted the tree. And while the tree is drying, you keep praising God. The Bible tells us that it's honor. What you are going to do now is an honor God is bestowing on you. And what is the honor? Is to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples to bind their kings with chains and their nobles with fetters of iron. You are now to execute the judgment that has been written. What is the judgment written against Pharaoh? God said, the nation that holds you into slavery, I will punish. That is the judgment that was written. And that continues even in your life. As God has let you go now, you are now in charge. Yeah. I am in charge. Yeah. So don't let the enemy come and harass you anymore. God has honored you with your right to avenge. The many years of the enemy's work and all that, it is now your turn to avenge. That honor has been bestowed on you. And the word of God says, God has written a punishment. I told you, when God uses either a person, 
a circumstance, demon or whatever, to make you unhappy because discipline is never easy, God will turn around and punish that entity. This is why you must be careful when a person is in trouble. Because if he's going through discipline and you take advantage of that to make his life miserable, you are setting yourself up against God. Children of God, the Yorubas have a saying. They say when somebody says, help me to beat my child, it doesn't mean it to. Be careful, because if you, if you do it too much, you, you'll be in trouble. That's exactly with God. God told many nations, including Assyria and others, he said, because my son is under discipline and because I asked you to help me to discipline him, you now thought you are something. As you go, I speak it to your life. <laughs> Vengeance against the enemy starts now. You are in charge. He says he's honoring you. The solution, your own part, is to just be praising God. Because you have no fight to fight. You have no war to fight. You have no battle to fight. No, it is God's business to do the fighting. You remember the case of Judah in 2 Chronicles chapter 20. In 2 Chronicles chapter 20, if you look at verse 22, let's just read that. You know the story very well. What happened was this nation, Judah, very small, but they were faced with three big nations who wanted to destroy them. And the Bible said, in verse, what God, God gave them a message and said, you have no battle in this, oh. this is not your war, it's my war. What you do is, you keep praising me. While you are praising me, I will do the, I will do the warning, I will do the fighting. See verse 22. Well, from verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed those who should sing to the Lord and who should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and they were saying, praise the Lord for his mercy endures forever. I have told you, mercy can kill because when God shows you mercy, it might have to go against people in battle. And this is where God used it. Now look at verse 22. Now when they began to sing and to praise the Lord, the Lord sent ambush against the people of Ammon, Moab, and Monser, who had come against Judah, and they were defeated. Look at the, look at the strategy. For the people of Ammon and Moab stood up against the inhabitants of Monser to utterly kill and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitants of Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Amen. Amen. So when Judah came to a place overlooking the wilderness, they looked towards the multitude and they were dead bodies falling on the earth. No one had escaped. Hello? <sighs> Can you say with me, I pity my enemy. I pity my Pharaoh. Because God will set an ambush against them. Yeah. An ambush is when you think it is safe, whereas the enemy is hiding. He himself said, don't worry, you come and you think this is safe. And God dealt with them. What you are going to do from now is you keep praising God and let God set the ambush. Don't worry about the strategy. Mm -mm, don't worry. He knows what strategy to use. Do you know in the scriptures, God never lost a battle. But he never used the strategy twice. He used 
different strategies of war for each battle. There was a battle in which he was just raining hailstone on them. He was killing the enemy with hailstone. You see this one now? He killed them now with praise. When he was dealing with Pharaoh and his army, he, he, made, he sank them in the Red Sea. Different, different kind of battle strategy. Don't choose your own. You can choose the wrong one. You just be praising him. You just be praising him. You just be praising him. And as you praise him, the result is God will set ambush and God will deal with your enemy. Amen. 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 Children of God, let me show you something quickly in Psalm 150. Psalm 150 says, praise the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in his mighty firmament. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the lute and the harp. Praise him with the timbre and dance. Praise him with stringed instruments and flutes. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise him with clashing cymbals. Let everything that had breath praise the Lord. They put that, that chapter next to 149 because 149 says you are to execute judgment by praising God. And some people will say, so how do I praise God? He now gave to you. In this place, because of time, let me show you what it means. Number one, in verse one, it means praise the Lord in any place. That's why he says, praise him in his mighty firmament. Whatever your location, praise the Lord. Don't let anything keep your mouth shut. As long as you don't disturb them in the office, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. As long as you don't make a noise that can make them investigate you. <laughs> praise the Lord in the office. Praise the Lord in the, in the bathroom. Praise the Lord in the kitchen. Amen. Eh? All those kind of songs you are singing to abuse your husband. Translate it to... <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean. Uh -huh. Turn it to praise unto God. Next, praise him for any reason. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Which means look for a reason to praise God. Come up with a reason to praise God. And if any of you don't have a reason, let me borrow you one. Let me lend one to you. If you are still alive, you have a reason to praise the Lord. Uh -huh. uh, I don't have a child yet. Why should I praise God? You should praise God because the fact that you are still alive means you can still have a child. But when you are dead and gone, okay, that's nothing. That's the end of it. Look for a reason to praise God. The fact that you, you can speak other language other than your native language, that's something to praise God for. The fact that you are outside your native town and you are here because God has a purpose for you is something to praise the Lord for. The promises of God and his blessings, the past, the present, the future, are things to praise God. Look for a reason to praise the Lord. The next is praise him with the sound of the trumpet, praise him with this, praise him with that, means praise him anyhow. So the first is any place, any reason, anyhow. Hello? I thank God that the pastor warned our brother here, don't do what the children are doing, because it's not very safe. <laughs> the children were praising God in their own way. You do your own, your own way. It's not everybody that will be allowed to join the Koga choir. Uh -huh. Some of us have lost our voice. Some of us, uh, the whole thing is twisted with age and whatever. But we still praise God one way or the other. Praise God anyhow. If it is on the drum that you can praise him, praise him. Find a way to express your appreciation. Find a way. When you give money and you give your service, let it be in appreciation of what God has done for you. 
Some of us, when we, some of us, when we serve God, we serve God like uh, we are helping them. Yeah. When they are bringing the offering, something, something tell you, uh, help them with, uh, help them with. You are helping who? <laughs> Psalm 50 verse 12 says, if I'm hungry, will I come to you? He said, oh, the animals on the mountain belong to me. If I feel like smelling sweet, smelling sweet, I will, I will put fire in the bush. He said, but you should give thanksgiving unto God. Thank him, praise him. Let the Lord know you appreciate him. Do it anyhow. Whatever method you know how to praise God. If he's just reading the scriptures, if he's just singing, if he's just jumping, if he's just dancing, just praise him anyhow. Amen? Amen. And the final part of that Psalm 100, I mean 150 says, Let all who are still alive praise the Lord. That is to say, you have no excuse for not praising the Lord. You have no, as, as long as you have breath, as long as you can still breathe, you should praise the Lord. And so children of God, as we are going into the new year, Take your weapon along with you. Amen. What is your weapon? Uh -huh. Because the enemy will come again and say, are you sure you are really free? You say, come, come now. You want to know whether I'm really free? I deal with you. Praise him. Worship him. Any way, anyhow, any place. Praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. Children of God, the Bible says God inhabits the praise of his people. That is the secret. That is the secret. He didn't say God inhabits the prayer of his people. Because prayer is petition. Give me, give, 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 give. But when you praise, you see, when you make petition, you pray, God sends his angels but when you praise and worship him, what does he do? He comes himself. He's present in the praise. And that is what makes your praise beautiful to him and dangerous to the enemy. So when you praise the Lord, the presence of God is there to show himself strong on your behalf. That's why he told the people of Judah, you just praise me. Create an environment where I can move. Create an environment where I can deal with the enemy. And as they did, God indeed dealt with the enemy. The result is that without shooting an arrow, they got to the valley and it was all dead people. They were all dead and gone. And the, the valley that was supposed to be valley of anger became the valley of Baraka, the valley of blessing. They were just carrying blessing and blessing. And that's what will happen to you. Yeah. Between now and next year, Rehoboth, you are coming with testimony. Yeah. I know it. If you like, say amen. If you don't like, don't not say amen. But I'm telling you, Everyone who has been under this year's Rehoboth are coming this year with testimony. Because when God has fought the battle, what his people carry are just booties of the war. They don't get involved with the war. They carry the blessing that follow. You will carry your own blessing. You have been set free. You have gone from under the Pharaoh. Now you are coming back with praise. Amen. I want to try and sing. I may not qualify for your for admission into Koga, angels or boys or whatever. I will do it my own way. I will praise God from, from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting. I will praise God from everlasting, everlasting to everlasting.
ओके 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 यू आर मेकिंग ए वाउ यू आर एंडिंग दिस इयर्स रेहोबोत विथ ए कोवेना विथ गॉड सी दैट्स ए सॉन्ग द योर वास सॉन्ग दैट सेस आई विल प्रेस यू यू लॉर्ड जस्ट कीप बैकिंग मी अप I will have some problem interpreting that but you got the message. Mhm. I will just keep praising God. Let God do the fighting. So as I lead you now into making this covenant be careful. Don't rush into it if you are not serious about it. What I want to say is I will praise you from everlasting to everlasting. Everlasting starts now. You are getting into it now. Leave the battle for God. You praise him. Get the weapon that we deal with the enemy that we execute judgment on him according to the judgment that is written by God. I will praise God from everlasting everlasting to everlasting. Oh I we praise God everlasting Oh Oh I we praise God from everlasting everlasting to everlasting I we praise God Oh Come on let us praise him Oh I we praise God Amen. Can you join me in uh, dramatizing this a little bit? Okay. If it is your wife or husband that is next to you, you are free to say my wife, my husband. If not, just say my neighbor. Okay? Ha. So when instead of saying I will praise him now look to him and say my wife praise him Eh huh? my friend praise him my neighbor praise him from everlasting everlasting to everlasting ah. praise him from everlasting everlasting to everlasting why ya praise him Everlasting, everlasting. Come on, let us praise Him. Oh, everlasting to everlasting. We will praise Him. Everlasting to everlasting. I want you to spend the last one minute to say, Lord, I promise before you. I will avenge on your behalf by praising you and this time next year I will bring my testimony because you will fight on my behalf come and pray in the name of Jesus yes Jesus Yes Jesus. Yes Jesus. Yes Jesus. Yes Jesus. Yes Jesus. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Can you raise your hands up children of God? Father in the name of Jesus we bless your holy name we are grateful oh god we want you to know we appreciate you you have done for us much more than our mouth can utter from our heart oh god please take our praises accept our offerings of praise and as we go into the new year 
May we go with the weapon of praise to avenge on our enemies in the name of Jesus. So that by your grace and mercy, this time next year, we shall come with testimonies from the valley of blessing in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. To you we give all the glory, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Give Jesus a round of applause.